chapter eight. Uh, okay, um, so uh, we'll just get to it in just a second. I'll share the screen. Um, okay. Okay, perfect. Um, can you see the screen? All right. Um, so these are the, the shared slides. Um, as, as always, uh, we're using um, the slides of past cohorts. Um, and I just wanted to start, I said to Feder Federica earlier, um, that this chapter was a bit of a challenge for me um, because it presents such a different um, mindset or workflow um, actually, workflow, I guess, isn't the right word since in the context of tidy models, it's very specific. Um, but, um, but just a different um, yeah, mindset um, with how, how do we handle um, the modeling process. Um, so uh, feel free to jump in and, and add or, um, or uh, to, to make uh, something that I say a little bit more precise, um, because uh, as I said, it was a bit challenging for me to, to, um, to perceive the, the whole um, um, framework of the, of the recipes package, okay? Um, so um, in summary, um, the, the idea of the recipes package um, and what we're going to talk about here is uh, using the recipe function and using the uh, the steps um, uh, auxiliary utility functions um, regarding the um, the feature engineering process. Um, I, I guess the main um, the like the main idea of the chapter, which then technically presents. Um, how how this comes to be is that the 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 phase um, or the step of the feature engineering in the whole modeling process is actually inside or within the modeling process, and it's not a preliminary step. Um, and and for me, um, it was um, it it was I guess a new thing. Like I I'm very accustomed to. Uh, performing, um, for example, uh, like log transformations. Um, in in past uh, meetings, we've talked about uh, PCA, uh, principal component analysis, um, or like uh, um, uh, calculating ratios between uh, between variables. And I'm very used to do it like uh, uh, in the deep layer uh, package. Um, uh, mindset. It's like a data manipulation thing. It's not within the, the modeling process. And, and what recipes offers and the whole tidy models framework offers is to include these steps inside the modeling process. Um, so, so that's like, I guess, the main idea um, of the package. Um, and, and the entire rest of the chapter is, is elaborating on how this comes to be and why is this important and so on. Um, so uh, we'll continue. Um, this is um, like a helper table, which is uh, both here and in the, like its sources in the repository in GitHub in the, like of the book, of the Tidy Models book club, um, which um, uh, features uh, which kind of uh, models or different models, um, which kind of, for each model, which kind of, uh, of different uh, pre-processing pre -processing steps are, uh, um, are uh, recommended. Um, so this is, um, uh, for me, I guess, like, and also we've talked about it in the past, I mostly use either uh, linear or um, or logistic regression. So this I'm I'm really not that familiar with most of these models, but um, but yeah, maybe in the future for some of you this may be you might uh, find this helpful. Um, the um, this is like the where we've gotten so far. 
Um, and this is like a, a basic, um, very basic like uh, LM uh, kind of model predicting sale price uh, by a neighborhood and uh, uh, gross living area, you're built and so on. And this is like the normal frame, framework, the non-tidy models framework. And this is how the tidy method, uh, this one how it, within the broom package, how it presents. It. Um, so, so if we wouldn't have used the, the tidy models framework, that's how we've done. It. We would have done it. Um, using the tidy models framework, framework, as we've done before, we start with creating a split, a resampling split, and then um, using uh, the training and the test data, um, like splitting the data, and then we create a recipe. Um, and the recipe starts with uh, with the formula, uh, which the the chapter um, um, uh, it, it says a lot about like the role the different roles of of uh, formula, which for me theoretically was very helpful, like um, um, to to um, to say like this is the predictors and these are the outcomes. And to uh, to use uh, either like transformations or different functions on different uh, variables. Um, so the, these are like different th um, theoretically different roles of the formula. In the recipe, we include the uh, the formula in its most simple form. For example, in the previous formula, we didn't use the we use the log transformation. Here, we don't use it. We use instead the step log. Um, transformation uh, or uh, function, which creates for the this variable, the gross living area, it creates uh, the log transformation. Um, another thing that I found very useful um, is the idea of, uh, of uh, helper selectors. For example, as you can see here in the all nominal predictors, uh, which says take all of the nominal, meaning non-numerical or qualitative predictors and um, conduct uh, or create uh, dummy variables or dummy encoding, um, which uh, I guess we are familiar with. Just give me a sign. Yes, no, dummy encoding. No, okay. So quite here, I'll, um, I'll explain. Maybe we can open the, uh, the chapter itself in a, in a second. Let's find here. Um, okay, perfect. So I'll just um, increase the size of this for a second. Okay. Um, so if we would have taken just a second. Oh, I lost it. Oh no. I think it's here. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so let's, uh, for example, take the uh, building type. Okay, um, you know what? We can, um, we can go and do it inside uh, our studio. Okay. Uh, let's do it here. We'll create this thing. And, oh, sorry, uh, library tidy models. And we're loading the AIMS data set. Okay. Um, and we can glimpse. And we can see here the entire variables. We're not in interested in all of these variables. We are interested in the building uh, type. Sorry. Do you remember? Um, the, okay, perfect. So um, here we can see we have these are the, um, in the bottom left corner, 
the different building types, okay? Um, so if we would have inserted um, uh, this variable into a model, for example, predicting like using the normal LM function to predict sale price. Um, it's hard. That's always the tricky part with LM because you don't have like the the hopper which like auto completes. Um, so it's a little bit harder, but I guess it's fine. Um, if we're trying to predict sale price by building type. Oh, so we need to data. Okay. Um, we get this weird thing. Okay. We can even tidy it. So it would be a little bit more obvious. Um, so we're predicting sale price by the type of the building. And we can see that because let me scroll up a bit for a second, because the building type has uh, five uh, different types of buildings, one family, two family condo, duplex, something like, I guess, townhouse and maybe something else. We can see in the, in the documentation of the, um, of the data set. Um, uh, this means that every, um, every different, kind or every different type of building, every different category in this variable, um, it, um, it's supposed to have a different effect or a different correlation with the uh, outcome variable, which is the sale price. And we need to somehow tell um, the, the model to, to tell it, okay, so you need, you, you can just, um, you know, take, uh, one family or two family and double it in two because this is like a word or a string and this is a number. So we can we can conduct uh, this mathematical operation. So what R does, both base R and tidy models, is to take this qualitative variable and turn it into something numeric. What um, the LM function that we used here does automatically is to turn it and to say, okay, um, I can turn it um, into uh, five different categories. Um, and for each one, I'm going to, uh, to tell what's its effect or correlation um, or, or estimated, um, estimated effect. If we will go back to the, uh, to the tidy models chapter, the way that it's mathematically done is by creating uh, what's called a model matrix. Um, which is what we see here, okay? So when we take, um, it's actually taking this original um, building type variable and turning it into this um, four um, other variables, two family condo, duplex, townhouse, and townhouse E. I'm not sure if, I'm, if that's the correct pronunciation, but whatever. Um, and what happens, is that um, each new uh, variable gets like an encoding, like this variable gets either zeros or ones. And then when we put it inside the model equation, um, one represents that this is a building type of two family condo, um, and zero represents that it's not. And as you can see here, uh, this column is the raw data variables, and this row, top row, is the new variables. Um, is that each different um, building type gets its, its own encoding? For example, duplex gets one, but uh, for every other uh, building type, it gets zeros. And th in that way, we can distinguish between different variables and we can transform qualitative variables like building type into something that we can perform mathematical operations. So to conclude, and then Federico or Freya or May, if you want to, to add something more, uh, I'll be more than happy because I think it's the first time I'm ex explaining this process in English. Um, uh, the whole uh, idea of this is to allow tidy models 
to uh, transform this qualitative variable of, we're going back here to step dummy, to take these nominal predictors, which are not uh, numeric, they're nominal, meaning like building type, they're qualitative and allowing the model to, uh, to use them for prediction purposes. So maybe that was a, a bit too long. <laughs> I'm sorry if it was because it's my first time uh, explaining this in English. Um, but Quadri, if you have uh, more questions, I'll be happy to answer or let Federico or Freya or May jump in. Yes, I, I, I understand your <clears throat> explanation perfectly. Although they, I, I am still like uh, digesting the book uh, gradually. So I haven't really gone deeper into the book. And based on your uh, based on your explanation, you are trying to say the step dummy function helps to um, transform these uh, nominal uh, variables or those variables that are categorical and make it much more uh, and make it um, numeric or in form of. Uh, but my question is that the binary form that it was transformed into. Is it not also categorical because zero and one? Um, th th that's a good question. The idea of zeros and ones is to precisely be this in-between point where it's both um, perceivable to us as humans to, to see it as qualitative, to say, uh, is this uh, of like, is this building of this type or not? Which is a question like of qualitative um, nature, as, as you're saying, but also um, it's, it's uh, accessible for a computer to, to get this value and to compute it and to say, okay, so I have this zero or one and uh, I can multiply this value um, in order to create a prediction. Um, um, maybe you guys, some of you remember where in the book we have like an example of a model equation and maybe there it will be um, easier to understand if we like see a model equation. Okay. Right. Uh, so basically it's actually what you, uh, what you said. If, if there, uh, so the, basically the uh our data set be become bigger uh because now uh all the buildings uh, so basically expand <laughs> no okay so uh, we have one and zeros so we have one when the type of building in this case is uh corresponds to to the other data uh, that we got available such as years uh, and locations and sales price. So if that for, for that sales price, we have this that type of building. So we're going to have a one. And when we make the formula, the model uh, formula, uh, we will consider a coefficient which will be multiplied by one. Okay. Instead, if there is not that type of building for that price. For example, in our observed data, we have a zero. So that zero means that we are not going to take consideration of the type of building for, for that uh, observation. So our, our data set is spans, basically. So I think that, that that's um, the, the most uh, reasonable explanation. And um, they're not categorical. They are absolutely numbers because we use, as you said, multiplying one and zero for the coefficient. Okay, so so this is just for to conclude this uh, this idea. This is from chapter six of fitting models, and this is an example of a model equation for for a single observation. Okay, the i here means like a single one, just. Uh, one of the observations, okay? And the idea, for, for example, in this idea of a linear regression is that we have this um, intercept, like a constant, just like a number, like a uh, start point of a sale price. 
And then we, what we do is we have this estimate, which is like the beta, like just like what the model is trying to predict, what's the, um, the, the estimated slope. And then we have um, a value, like a numeric value that's needed to be put inside the equation. Um, for example, uh, like a simple example would be um, like the size of the property in square feet. Okay, so for example, if the size of the pro property is a thousand feet, a uh, thousand square feet, sorry, then and we and our model predicts that um, this beta, this um, man, I'm I'm not I'm not used to saying these words. Uh, like, um, what's the name of the like the estimate um, in English? I'm sorry, uh, like uh, like parameter. I'm not sure. Um, like the thing that you multiply the value. Yeah, they, they are. Never mind. Sorry? Federica, what did you say? Yeah. Yeah, okay. that, that's the uh, beta. Uh, yeah, the, the beta. Yeah, the, 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 expect, the estimation uh, of the, the, the beta. Uh, okay, yeah. so perfect. So, so this is the estimated slope, I guess, of the estimated beta. Um, and this value needs to be uh, numeric because this is an equation, okay? We can't tell a computer or we can't conduct it like ourselves, calculate it ourselves like in a pen and like uh, pencil and paper um, and to say, okay, so multiply three by uh, building a type um, condo or townhouse or whatever. We need to somehow um, insert here a numeric value. So this is why we're uh, we're creating this uh, what's called dummy very um, dummy encoding to be able to use this uh, equation, which is mathematical, um, to predict um, finally this y this uh, samples. Um, so quite does this make sense? Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Yes. Yes. It makes sense now. <laughs> Oh, okay, yes. perfect, perfect. Um, okay, so we'll continue. Um, so um, to recap the, this this uh, idea of creating a recipe with the formula and then conducting these kind of steps, log steps, steps, and dummy steps, um, is the basic idea of the recipes package, um, and its justification is to um, include, as I said this whole feature engineering or pre-processing inside the model workflow. And actually, um, as we'll see in a second, um, okay, we'll see it in a second. Um, so this is how we create a recipe, okay? You, with the recipe uh, function and then piping um, additional, sorry, steps. Um, okay. Um, how we how we're using it inside our entire entire tidy models frame. So first things first, we're creating a model or a model specification. I think that's how we called it um, with a linear, for example, linear regression, and we're setting the engine. Um, uh, as we re remember, we can also specify the mode. We had a little bit of a discussion regarding this in the past. And then we're creating a workflow, okay, with the work, workflow uh, function and then adding the model we've created here. Um, after adding the, uh, the model specification, we add the formula, which we're using, and then we add the recipe, okay? So um, model specification, workflow, um, formula and recipe, okay? And this, uh, it, it, after performing these steps, our more workflow objects basically holds the entire um, process, like the entire modeling process, okay? Both pre-processing, um, formula, um, we don't have it here, but uh, data splitting um, is also here. Um, and, and this, like the idea of the workflow as you talked about last week is to hold this entire thing together along with the recipe, 
And then when we're predicting, um, uh, when we're predicting, for example, on the training data set using this workflow, um, the tidy models know to perform all these pre-processing steps um, uh, when fitting and when predicting. Um, so uh, this is the, the basic idea. Um, I wanted to, uh, and we can uh, later extract like different parts of the model fit from, uh, um, from this like workflow object or fit object. Um, for example, this is how the the tidy uh, the tidy function presents um, presents the um, the different uh, uh, predictors and their uh, estimates and statistics and and so forth. Um, so if, if we're going back to the start where we've seen the nor like the uh, base LM function and how it functions, this is a more uh, robust. Um, and easy to scale um, framework. Um, and, and again, I'm saying uh, this is something that uh, I'm also getting used to uh, myself. Um, okay. So um, like we, uh, we've talked about earlier with the step dummy, we have um, more kinds of steps uh, to perform which help us um, in different kind of use cases. For example, uh, step unknown, which is um, uh, specifying how to handle or change missing values. Step novel, which uh, for factor variables or like qualitative variables um, tells uh, tidy models how to handle when a new factor level appears on, on the data that uh, like when, when you're trying to predict something new and step other, which um, deep layer or like the four kids package um, has like FCT other, which is like uh, refactoring uh, all of these like leftovers, small other factor levels. Um, this uh, performs it inside the recipe. And uh, we have a lot of different steps. Um, uh, we won't go all uh, over them here. Uh, just one, uh, a few of them which are important is a step interaction um, or step interact, sorry, for creating interaction terms uh, inside the um, uh, model formula or model specifications. Um, and this is like an illustration of them. I, I'm, I'm uh, just going through it uh, pretty fast because we can't like jump, like uh, dive in to every kind of step because there are a lot of them. Um, okay, uh, and the splines, uh, 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 Federica, I know you're like a, a, a hardcore st statistician, so maybe you, you want to. I'm I come from social sciences, so I'm not uh, that much like uh, into splines and everything. So maybe I'm not explaining it. Uh, in the perfect way, but it's like creating like this smaller non, like small non linearities within the model, like allowing to the the linear model to bend a little bit uh, uh, in some way. Uh, and this like uh, uh, step NS allows allows the model to be like smoother than uh, just like a linear uh, model. Um, and this is. Actually, I'm not sure what this is. It's something in the visualiz visualization um, uh, didn't work here. Okay, um, so uh, there are a lot of steps. Normalize PCA. Okay, I won't go um, over every one of them. Um, something that is important to note is that um, we are able to tell to tell like uh, the recipe function. Um, that if if we don't want this step to be performed when you when predicting on new data, um, we have the skip equals true argument. Um, the chapter um, really elaborates on different use cases where this thing is uh, um, is important. Um, I can't remember them just now, uh, but uh, sometimes it's very important. Uh, for example. 
uh, if we are uh, nor like um, normalizing, like um, um, putting something like a and cal calculating it to the mean of the. Um, actually, I'm not sure if that's a good example. Um, if you guys remember uh, the example in chapter perfect, and if not, you can continue. Um, okay. Um, and the last thing is that we've uh, seen uh, tidy as a method for um, for uh, tidying um, model results, like model um, uh, terms or estimations. But it's it also it's also able to tidy a recipe. Okay, for example, we have this recipe where we've seen earlier step log, step other, step dummy, interaction, splines, whatever. And what and when we tidy this recipe, what happens is um, we um, we create a table of these different steps. Um, this uh, this is handy if we're um, if we have a lot of different steps and we want to investigate it. Um, and also this ID, ID sorry, um, and also skip, um, which, uh, which help us to, uh, to um, inquire uh, our recipe if we have some kind of bugs or problems. Um, okay, the last thing uh, that's mentioned in the chapter is the idea of uh, column rows, uh, which are um, which are cases when we have uh, important columns or imp important variables inside our data frame, but for us they are neither predictor nor outcome. Uh, the example that's given in the chapter is, for example, address, like additional information uh, regarding the observation, which is uh, important for like future investigation, but not for the modeling process itself. Uh, personally, an example that uh, uh, I found, uh, which also uh, is important in this, uh, in this case, is um, case weights. Okay, so like saying, uh, if you have survey data and you have a respondent that's representing just one person, but another respondent that's, uh, let's say, which comes from a minority group, and then uh, they represent um, 10 respondents, then this thing needs to be accounted for in some way in the modeling process. Um, so the idea of roles and, and cases, wait, um, uh, if, I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's also in, uh, comes in handy here because these case weights, they are needed to, to be accounted for inside the modeling, either prediction, or uh, or uh, or uh, estimation, but they the case weights like the case weights column is neither a predictor nor an outcome variable. Um, so this again is another use case that I personally encountered using survey data. Um, so this is basically it, um, and I wanted to uh, I. I started to to write the code for it I, I wasn't able to finish it but just to um to illustrate the importance of tidy models for me like what got me into into this and and the importance of, of specifically the recipes and um uh uh sorry yeah the recipes uh package and uh pre-processing pre-processing that's what i uh, wanted to say um uh, that that's what got me into this. Uh, just a second, share with you. Okay, um, so uh, just very briefly, um, you know, I'll make it bigger. Um, here I just load packages, and this is um, data from the ISSP uh, International uh, Social Survey Program. Okay, it's uh, uh, just uh, data that I can buy, um, you know, like during my uh, my work. Um, it's conducted in uh, dozens of countries around the world every year, um, and 
um, it has like hundreds of columns. Uh, just uh, to illustrate, uh, I'm just using it because it's data from Israel, which is um, accessible for me, like it's accessible for everyone. Um, and um, I, I, I want to, um, uh, to investigate uh, specifically um, two variables, which are the education variable. DF is uh, the data frame, which everything is uh, being uh, like is uh, where the data lives. And the edu is the education variable. Um, and this is like, it's different categories. Um, someone that's finished high school, uh, finished with uh, Bagurt. It's a Hebrew word meaning like a matric matriculation exam or like uh, how someone finished high school. They either have post-secondary post education, BA, MA, or don't know. Okay, so this is like a normal survey data, which is ordered, right? We have this hierarchy between um, different, uh, different levels, okay? Um, and then another uh, variable that's, for example, interesting for us is, let's say, uh, hours, okay? hours and let's create a summary for the hours to just see what's going on. Uh, so it's range, range is between uh, zero and 84. This is hours worked per week, okay? So how many hours this respondent worked, uh, oh, sorry, not, yeah, week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how many hours the, this respondent worked last week? And the mean is somewhere around 24, okay? So if we're trying to predict hours worked by education level, okay? So let's look at this. It looks weird, okay? You see this and even, you know what? If we tidy it, um, we'll see that what, um, uh, what the normal like LM um, function does is creates the, like this L, Q, C times four and times five. Um, this is maybe Federica is able to explain it in more like mathematical detail, but it's, it's because uh, education is an ordered factor. It's an ordinal variable. And the way um, the, the LM function, the, the like base R uh, linear regression function handles it is like, um, like this, okay? Like saying, okay, you have, actually I'm not sure about like this whole um, mathematical function here, but it has, uh, using the, our terms uh, we defined earlier, it, it has like a very specific model matrix uh, with uh, which it, it works. Um, but what I wanted, for example, in this very um, uh, simple use case is to, um, to handle education, like every education level, for example, handle like the most basic uh, level is one, this basic level is two, this level is three, this level is four and so on, okay? So, um, so this was how I wanted it to, uh, to display the data. And then what I wanted the, um, uh, the terms here to show is not like this, um, weird output that I don't understand is like, just show how much every, like a jump in, the, in, a, in, in another level, how much it, uh, it affects the hours worked, how much more does it add? Um, and using it in doing this in base R was very hard for me. But then when I got into tidy models, I, uh, I saw this step or, sorry, ordinal function, ordinal score, sorry. Um, and what it does, it, it's like, uh, I, I didn't have the time to put it inside like this entire workflow um, um, like object. And maybe we can do it together or, or during like your questions or whatever, but um, basically what it does, sorry, uh, creates a specification of a recipe like, it's like a model matrix uh, and converts ordinal factor, again, specifically like this education uh, variable and create it, creates like a numeric, uh, 
numeric score. You can see maybe an example. Here, you can see they say by default, the translation uses a linear scale, one, two, three, exam, uh, uh, like, et cetera. But uh, you could also insert specific score functions if you want something um, more sophisticated. So this is, um, again, like what I used in my original work when I had like this trouble um, handling uh, ordinal variables. I just used tidy models and the recipes and the step ordinal score function, and it really helped me. So this is what uh, initially got me into tidy models. And uh, this is uh, some of the reasons that I'm here. Uh, so I think this is it. I'm, I hope it wasn't too much all over the place because as I said, it, it, it was a bit challenging for me like to handle uh, this chapter. And uh, feel free to share your thoughts or ask questions or notes or whatever. So thank you. Thank you, Matan, that was really good. Um, I think I kind of like agree with you that in principle, I sort of looked at this chapter and thought like, oh, you know, it's, is it not just easier to do the pre-processing beforehand? And it's like having it as part of this seems a bit kind of non-intuitive, but having gone through it, 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 it seems quite simple and nice to do, but I, I do think it's a bit of a kind of mentality shift to um, put it all together. Um, and yeah, thanks for sharing that that thing at the end as well. I had actually been wondering what happens if you try and put in ordered factors and thinking like, oh, it probably just converts into numbers. So <laughs> it's good to see that you've worked through that and what actually happens. I suppose what's happening in BASAR, is, is it trying like lots of different sorts of models, like kind of different polynomials or something? I'll have to have a look into that. Um, but yeah, I suppose it, it, it. I'm glad to see that also you can specify your own Kind of scoring system because I suppose you know you might think with education like I want to rank this like this is a big jump from like you know de degree to postgrad or whatever I don't know so that you can customize that um but yeah thank you for going through that thank so, you yeah, thank yeah. you thank you I like to add that you need to see tidy models as a the utility of tidy models um when you want to try different models so it provides like a framework where you can uh, basically set up uh, uh, different type of models, which means not only different models in in the, in itself. So in the in the meaning of of changing model, but even changing the formula of your model. So basically, uh, in the workflow, you put inside the recipe and the model. But then you can have different recipes, different types uh, of uh, feature engineering um, um, of your data, original uh, observations, and then uh, more models. And the step functions are, are as Madan said, um, a good way to tidy your uh, original observations but um within your uh, workflow within uh, the time that you are making a model and changing things uh, um assessing the model to make it perfect okay so you, you it provides a way for you to adjust and change um your original observation through step functions so to have a new tidy set to use in your model and then also provide the possibility to use different models so you have more recipes to use more models to use within one workflow and these steps functions are nothing else not nothing else that other like way to to do wrangling to tidy data because you then you use a step log but then you realize that it's exactly the same you can you can even do in fact the the, the book mentions the fact that you might want to do and and pose the question um when it's best to tidy your data if do it earlier 
than making the formula or after you have uh, set up the formula and so using the step function because somehow it doesn't change anything but somehow it can change because you can do you can see what's happened so when when you do the step function if you uh, pipe the bake and the the prep and the bake the other two function prep and bake you can see your new your new set your new data set modified with your step functions so that way uh, you can uh, you you have basically uh, tied your data and you can use it uh, for making user suggestions or and then making models and it is a question whether to use the step functions uh from scratch so applying directly to your original data or making some adjustment before and then apply the step functions yeah yeah i think that's a good question and i think it's um uh, for me it's something that's hard to answer right now is is not like being not an experienced tidy models user um i think like i i have yet to face all of the different uh bugs or pitfalls or like um bad things that that happens when you um like do their data wrangling too soon or too early and then like you 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 encounter this bug and it takes like a few hours to work of work to understand that um oh you should have done like step mutate instead of just mutate so like me personally i've have i haven't been like in those uh dark areas with tidy models yet so uh so i think uh it like i think uh you're presenting a good question and i think personally um it's hard for me to like to, to tackle this question, to answer it. Like, uh, I ju yeah. I'll just use, you know, what whatever Max and Julia say, basically, or Federica. Yeah. Basically, when you make the formula, if you do, if you make a selection of your predictors, you apply your uh, step function, so your modification, your feature engineering only to some predictors, and then you can, otherwise you can select your predictors, it's a way to, um, but the, to to rank the, to, to to basically tidy your data. But uh, uh, the result is uh, exactly the same if you do before or after. Um, but then uh, even the cross validation is something else to take consideration of. So when you do cross validation within your tidy data, if you do before or after, you haven't tidied your data with the step functions or not. So there's many, many things to take consideration of when you uh, deal with some, when you want to basically uh, set up a model that you are going to put into production. So for actually using for new data, and so yeah then it needs to be robust yeah um any more like thoughts or notes or questions no more for me no for me once again thank you for a good presentation so sorry i could not join from the beginning but i will still go over the recording again because i was having another meeting uh, thank you for uh, for making the effort to join us um so who's presenting uh, next week um i see for for the meantime it's empty right Yeah. Uh, Federica, you're uh, muted. 
Um, if if uh, uh, no one else would like to take the chapter, I'll do that. No, not a problem. So maybe Freya. No, <laughs> you haven't done it yet. So that that might be Sorry, I haven't. I, I can't, I'm not sure if I'm able to make next week. It's a bit difficult for me to commit to presenting because it's um like during due to the time slots, I can't necessarily know if I can come to the meeting. Um, I'm hoping I might be able to do one of the later ones depending on my like schedule, but it's a bit hard for me to commit and I don't want to on the day be like, actually, I can't come. Well, so we catch up on Slack and then uh, uh, we decide if someone else would like to step up and uh, do the chapter, it's very, that's very welcome. Uh, otherwise, I'll do that. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's put end.